Hey guys, I'm here in the Netherlands and I wanted to do a quick review about some amazing Russian perfumes that I just discovered. And um, you know, I'm a big lover of Russian culture, especially from the 19th century. Uh, I mean, the writers um, were amazing during that time, like Turgenev, Dostoevsky, Tolstoy. Um, yeah, I mean, I know that there was like a huge difference between rich and poor in Russia. And uh, because of this difference, um, probably that's also the reason why the re bloody revolution uh, took place so easily in Russia. Because the people were so poor and they were so fed up with the, uh, the rich people that they wanted to make this revolution to, to get another system and um, they did that and then we got the communistic period and I have a little bit of a feeling that despite the fact that I mean everybody in a certain way got like a better life um, it also became very difficult to be creative and um, to have the same kind of uh, culture uh, as they had before and uh, this culture was so amazing I mean um, during that period the rich people the noble people spoke French also to each other you can read that in the books and uh, I mean people were traveling from Russia to Paris going up and down there were like amazing conversations between French writers and Russian writers and it was all like very special and um, during this period there was also very very important perfume making in Russia in Moscow uh, maybe you can't believe because this communistic period made everything in a certain way so ugly that you cannot believe that there was such a sophisticated beautiful perfume industry in Russia but it was true you know and one of the most famous perfume makers Ernest Bo uh, who designed perfume number five he made this perfume for the royal family in uh, Russia but also he made perfumes for um, uh, to export he wanted to show these perfumes in the south of France and I think Coco Chanel he, she, she took number five from the perfumes that he uh, that he took to the south of France and that's why it's called the number five Chanel number no. five and actually it's a Russian perfume Chanel number no. five origins from a Russian perfume and originally Ernest Beau is a descendant I think from a soldier who fought with Napoleon against the Russians so there's like a French Russian connection in perfume making and it's very interesting and um, yeah during this period the communistic period it was not so nice to to develop new things uh, but it was like and I think the writers uh, like Dostoevsky, Turgenev etc actually who were kids from very rich people who never had to work and could just spend their time writing and and and, and philosophying about things Actually, they helped to create this revolution because they wrote for the normal people. So the people were able to to to, to hear these stories and to understand that they could develop themselves. Now, anyway, um, I'm still very uh, very much interested in this culture, and I really love to hear about um, Russian life. Although the problem is that um, a lot of Russian people that have such great knowledge and have such big feelings about life um, they had because of communism a period that they were like only interested in material stuff you know a lot of uh, Russian people that I met were like very interested in yeah, everything that was uh, that we considered so cheap and stupid and uh, but underneath their kind of simpleness they have such a rich culture and they know so much and they've suffered so intensely in Russia they I mean this it 
it is a country that suffered maybe the most of all countries and people. So they know how it is to suffer and they want to have a better life. And um, later on we got this perestroika period and there was like more freedom coming up. Maybe it, now it's not like that anymore. Uh, but uh, during this period I think there was like a playground or possibilities for people to get creative again in Russia. And one of these lights from, from out of this period, I mean one of the people that started to create and make beautiful things is this woman that, uh, that has this perfume house now in Russia. And I just discovered it and um, her name is uh, Anna Swarikina. Swarikina, here it is. This is her little box that I get the samples from. I got some beautiful samples, I'll show them here. And I'll tell you what I think about it. And um, it's really something, I can tell you, it's something magic. Uh, it's not often that I smell a perfume and I get this magic feeling, you know. And when I get this magic feeling, there's something going on, something very important. And this perfume has creates this magic feeling. And I will just tell you what I think. I didn't read anything about the perfumes. It's just my own impression, what I feel, how I feel it, and what I think about it. And there's also a good reason to try these perfumes if you ever have a chance. Uh, to try them and you might be inter interested in them seriously to uh, to uh, to add them to your collection and let's just first start with this green madness uh, here it is and it's also a green perfume you can see it here and maybe you know that I'm a big lover of Chypre and green perfume so Maybe that's also something that creates something magic. But I'll show you and tell you what I think. <sighs> you have to wait a few seconds. But this is such a herbal, beautiful fragrance. <sighs> that it is, oh, it is really something special. It is the freshness of spring, but it has the herbs of autumn and uh, this is just a gorgeous fresh amazing green perfume that you have to try if you have a chance it's green madness it is green madness but it's also magic I mean sometimes you smell this perfume and you know yeah this is something special and with this perfume I have that feeling the green madness super fresh herbal perfume that has a vibe that you also smell in some really great Italian perfumes. Ah, it's really nice. Yeah. Very, very nice perfume. Okay, the next one is a perfume that, I mean, um, I think this Anna Swarikina, um, I don't know if I pronounce it good, Anna Swarikina or something. Um, um, has something to do with leather. I mean, she has. I think she she has a leather line or something. But you probably all know that the Russian uh, Russian atmosphere has um, some um, something special with leather. There is like Russian leather, kvirderus. It's like something special that, in some way, reminds me of this 19th century uh, palaces and perfumes. I mean, if you've ever been to the Hermitage in St. Petersburg, I've never been there. But if you know a little bit about the history of Tsar Peter the Great and how he wanted to have an armada, um, uh, an army on the, on the sea, and how he moved the palace and everything from Moscow to St. Petersburg, which was later called uh, Stalin, uh, Leningrad, I think, or Stalin, Leningrad, Stalingrad. And later it became St. Petersburg again, uh, from Peter the Great, St. Petersburg. And I think he he went to Amsterdam to learn shipbuilding. And also he went to France, I think also incognito, like in secret, um, to see the Louvre 
and to see the French palaces and he got inspired to rebuild something like that in Russia and yeah he has a, he has made oh, sorry. he made amazing um, buildings there and I think this Russian leather is something that in some way has to do with this period and I'm going to put it on I have it here Russian leather and um, yeah I mean for me Russian leather is something magic so I will tell you what I think about this Russian leather I put it here on me I spray it I have to do a little bit like this before you smell it because otherwise you get all this alcohol and my goodness this is so natural and alemanic, alemanic. Oh. Oh. This is an animalic, beautiful leather perfume, which also has some patchouli, I think, in it, uh, and some earthy smell like you have with Terre de Hermes, this earthy vibe. I can also smell some some herbs that I know that reminds me of a of some perfumes that I that are very natural. Yeah, this is an amazing natural beautiful Russian perfume very ah, very strong and beautiful yes I love this queer de Rus, amazing leathery Russian perfume and uh, let's go to the next one the next one that I have is this um, yeah let's try another um, yeah let's try this one it is 150 days of summer well that sounds really good and maybe it's a little bit romantic let's just try I put it here and see what it does oh, here it is oh, this is your summer fragrance this is, yeah, this is real summer. This is, uh, I smell freshness. I smell some grape, grapes. I smell lemon. I smell floral, beautiful things. I smell some, some vibe from the ocean. This is the total summer fragrance. And this could like, a fragrance list like this could be easily um, a favorite of mine. It could be easy be my signature scent. It's just gorgeous. It's just a, a fragrance that you could wear like every day. Super good. <sighs> yeah, this is this kind of magic feel that some perfumes give me. It's this 150 days to summer. So it's like the summer is in the air, coming up. And uh, you could also uh, think about this fragrance uh, as a kind of a licorice, uh, beautiful fragrance that you, could, um, that you could smell and wear when it's really cold. When it's like, um, let's say, midwinter and some ice. And you're in a sauna and you're coming out of the sauna and you want to drink something you drink some vodka or some rum and you smell this amazing perfume and then you f you get a feeling of warmth and summer um, all around you while at the same time you see this crystal blue ice and snow and that's what this this fragrance gives me it gives me a fresh feeling um, that I could wear during summer, but also in winter, just when you want this, to have this feeling of summer around you. Bah, really good. Okay, now I go to this 
my vanilla. Is my vanilla, you expect some kind of yeah, sweet fragrance, probably. Maybe like a little bit kind of um, yeah, feminine fragrance. So let's try it. I just put it here. I have to wait a little bit. <laughs> wow. Ah, this is so animalic. This is like top. Super nice. Animalic. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I smell some castorium, I think, in it. Or not. What is it? Oh, it's a super natural, super nice vanilla, but in a, in a little bit an animalic, animalic way. So it's not like super sweet. It's an interesting animalic vanilla. Very beautiful. Something you've got to try. I think with these fragrances, you have to also have to wait a little bit how they develop on your skin. Because they're so natural, they will change over time. They're not like synthetic, uh, simple fragrances. These are beautiful, sophisticated, um, and created um, perfumes from an artist. You can you can smell them. Yeah. Yeah. All very beautiful. I mean, they're to me. These kind of fragrances are really personal and uh, in some way close to the skin but uh, in a nice way and there they you can smell that they are uh, that this is quality stuff okay now we go to the shiny umber let's see what shiny umber gives us here it is here you have the beautiful logo here look it's a little bit like sorry it's oh. shiny umber keeps us oh, here yeah, yeah 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 okay look at this one yeah, here it is. Shiny umber. <laughs> there we go. Ugh, have to wait a little bit. Wow. Oh. oh this is also so beautiful. Maybe it's strange to, to say, but I smell a little bit of fruit in it and um, some citrus fruit. But beside the citrus fruit, I smell some herbs from the Middle East. And all together gives this beautiful freshness. And it's not a heavy fragrance, this is a nice a little bit animalic, beautiful amber fragrance with some citrus and it gives a vibe that I don't know from any other perfume. It's it's beautiful. Wow, shiny amber. Wow. Got to try this one as well. Okay, and now I have the last one from the, the fragrance that, that, that I got. And there are like other ones. There, she made like enormously amount of different fragrances and I saw that some people really like other fragrances from her as well. So you, you do if you want to order some samples from her, uh, don't just take this ones, but try other ones as well. So this is a ghost house. Well, that's a nice fragrance to to end this uh, little uh, review, a ghost house. And uh, let's try what it is. I'm very curious. So where is the spot? Oh, here's a spot that I didn't use yet. Try it. Oh, I will smell gorgeous tonight. Wow. Have to wait a little bit. Oh, I smell some sweetness already. <laughs> yeah. Yes, this is this is a special fragrance. This is this is this comme de garçon kind of vibe, you know, that you know that there is something special going on. Um, yeah, this is a very special fragrance. 
I smell some candy, but I also smell some glue. I don't know. And and some sweetness. Oh. And also this earthiness. I mean, all her fragrances have some earthy vibe. And that's what I like so much about it. Maybe that's the magic vibe that I smell. It's the magic vibe of the earth and the nature that's all in her fragrances. It's sophisticated. It's, it, she uses a lot of beautiful, I think, raw materials. And and the, at the same time, you, sw you feel the quality and you, 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 you feel that this is... Um, yeah, this is not something simply made, but this is really uh, developed uh, with a lot of work. Yeah. And also, there's, there's this green vibe, which is ghost. Uh, what is it? A ghost house fragrance uh, vibe. Yeah, yeah. I can I can understand what she means with the ghost house because it's a very light, um, almost. Um, Invisible fragrance. Oh, yeah, beautiful. So very interesting house. You got to try this Anna Zworykina perfumes, and um, if you, if ever you have a chance, uh, maybe you can drop her a line on Instagram or uh, she has a website as well, and maybe you can just try to order some uh, beautiful samples. And uh, I'm really really happy that. Uh, uh, that this 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 beautiful Russian culture is reinvented by people like uh, Anna, and we we got to see this beauty this beauty that's in the people's heart and in their mind and in their culture. And I I mean the Russians can be really proud uh, that this this woman makes such beautiful perfumes. And I would love love to see more and hear more about Russian perfumes and. Um, if you if you check, like uh, the the old perfume house Ralais uh, from Moscow, you can just see what beautiful perfumes they made. And I think Anna Zvorikina she reinvented um, the the Russian beauty of perfume making, and that's something that we can be very delightful about. So okay, that's what I wanted to tell you. Um, it's been a longer review than I actually meant, but uh, yeah. I hope you like it, and uh, I, I, I tell, told you a little bit about my impression about this, uh, this perfumes. So uh, thank you, and uh, I see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.